And now for the radio program that is rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. And I'll tell you why. It's the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plans, even his innermost thoughts. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise in the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's the whistler for the tops in entertainment. And for the tops in gasoline quality, it's signal. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly, independent Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Fatal Appointment. Lee Brand was a happy man. There was a spring to his step as he crossed the front terrace of his palatial summer home at Carmel. At the door, he paused and looked back over the vast estate, silently congratulating himself on the business deal he had just completed. It was the biggest thing that had ever happened to him, big enough to provide all the money he would ever need. It would make it possible for him to drop his business identity with the gang in the city as Lee Brand and maintain social life here at Carmel as Julius Belmont, wealthy, retired businessman, and the man his daughter had always believed him to be. But as Bran ran through the whole story in his mind, he suddenly realized it was actually Paul Elliott's story right from the beginning. And that was on a July night a little less than two years ago, when Bran and one of his men were driving across the Sacramento River. Their headlights picked up the figure of a man standing on the railing. Hey, look at that guy. Is he gonna jump? Huh? Good Lord. Speed up, Dave. Pull over there. Pass. Hey! Hey, don't! Wait! He's waving at us. Yeah, maybe he isn't going... Nope. There he goes. No. That wave was just goodbye. Guy must be screwy when he gets... Get going, that... Dave. Down the ramp to the river. We'll pull him out. What? Come on, hurry! Hurry! Come on, come on. You're okay, buddy. Uh, 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 where? Where am I? You're in my apartment. We pulled you out of the river. You decided to take a little swim, remember? Oh. Well, I guess I should thank you, gentlemen, for saving my life. It was his idea, not mine. His? The name's Lee Brand. Yours? Why, it's... Oh, what's the difference? It's Elliot. Paul Elliot. Hmm. Any relation to the Elliots? In yes, the... yes. The favorite son. The black sheep they always thought was so white. You weren't giving yourself much of a chance to change. Not that way. I wasn't looking for chances. I'm not a gambler, Mr. Brand. Hmm. I wonder. Um... Uh, just how bad is it, Elliot? Anything a little time and money could mend? Look, look, you pulled me out back there. I, I said thanks, even though I don't appreciate it. But you don't look like Santa Claus, Mr. Brand. And your friend here... Listen, we can push you back in, brother. In fact, I think Never it's mind, a good... Never mind, Dave. 
What's there to hide, Elliot? Your life history would have been all over the front pages tomorrow. Yes, I suppose. Only when you get into a jam over 50000 in funds that belong to your own family. You don't like to talk about it. No, that way, is it? Well, I asked you a question a moment ago. How much money, how much time? I mean, to get things straightened out. All the way. It's not that easy. Besides, what's the catch? No catch. You see, I am a gambler, Elliot. It's my business. And I've never seen a situation yet that I couldn't rescue something out of. Haven't you got any real property we could save? No stocks, bonds, insurance policies? Well, sure. I, I've got insurance, $250,000 worth. With lapsed premiums. Could they be picked up, reinstated? I think so, but... What... What are you going for, Brand? Your peace of mind, and uh, mine, too. You said that, well, that with your own family, it's different. You don't like what they might think of you. That's right. Well, maybe I can fix that for you, if you fix things for me. Huh? I told you I'm a gambler. Let me clear my life up, too, with one last big toss. Fix it so I can retire. I'm... I'm with you right up to the $64 question. How do we do it? The answer's worth more, Elliot. Say the full amount of that insurance, $250,000. You make me the beneficiary and tell the insurance company, if they get nosy, that I refinance your business. I... I don't follow you. Here, take my pen. Let's write it out. A little note. Make it clear. All set? Go ahead. Date this July 8th. 1948. But but that's two years from now. That's right. You'll see. Well. Now write this. I, Paul Elliott, not acting under duress, am taking my life by my own hand. What? And that Wait a minute. Keep writing. And that no living person should in any way be held responsible for my death. Sign it. Put it in an envelope. Give it to me. Oh, listen, it's this is your crazy. Your I... deal, Paul. Yours and mine. I give you fifty thousand dollars, and you give me that suicide. But it's ridiculous. I... I'm all mixed up. I never heard of anything. Maybe like... you have. But I've been thinking of a deal like this for years. But how can we make a deal like that? What if I I, I change my mind two years from now and wanted to live? <laughs> Even I know the answer to that part. Right, David. Your uh, mind would be made up for you. Right on schedule. Oh. How about it, Paul? Fifty thousand dollars. Tempted? I'll... I'll have to think. Uh, give me some time. I'll, uh, I'll call you. I think so. I'll wait up until you do. <laughs> It's a strange, frightening proposition, isn't it, Paul? $50,000 tonight, simply by signing your name to that little note in your pocket. A note that says you died by your own hand. Walking along, thinking it out carefully, you wonder if you really would have to die. Brand himself might be dead in a year. A lot of things could happen before your own life fell due. You could straighten things out, Paul. You know you have the brains to get the business running again. You think you might find a way to outsmart Brand. If necessary, you might even kill him. Hello? Brand? This is Paul Elliott. I thought so. What about it, Paul? What have you decided? It's. it's a deal. I'll sign the suicide note tonight. With the prologue of Fatal Appointment, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. But now, since this is travel season, I'd like to pass along a tip to you drivers. Wherever you travel throughout the Pacific Coast states from Canada to Mexico, you'll discover that Signal is known as the Go Farther Gasoline. 
Now, naturally, we're mighty proud of that reputation, but even more so, we're proud of what makes Signal's famous mileage possible. The extra efficiency your motor gets from today's Signal gasoline, which also means more thrilling, knock-free power for your car, more driving pleasure for you. Yes, that's right. Performance is the result of the same features a gasoline must have to give you extra mileage. That's why Signal says, your speedometer is the best yardstick of gasoline quality. So if you want to be sure you're choosing the gasoline that stops in quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. Now, back to the Whistler. has moved swiftly, hasn't it, Paul, since the night you met Lee Brand, the night you tried to commit suicide and Brand pulled you out of the river. Yes, that night you made a bargain. You agreed to make Brand the beneficiary of your insurance policy in return for $50,000 to get you started again. And now Brand's backing has made it possible for the Paul Elliott Enterprises to rally surprisingly, surge ahead, and all your friends are talking about it, calling you the miracle man. Yes, Paul, it's different now. Not that every transaction has been completely honest, but you've been successful and so busy you have practically forgotten your deal with Brand. At the office, it's always the same, working at a fever pitch. Uh, yes? Hello, darling. Huh? Oh, Barbara, hello. Well, hell, you almost didn't remember me. Oh, now that's not true. I, uh, I was busy, Barbara. You're always busy. I get more than a few extra minutes with you lately. I'm lucky. Not as lucky as I am. <laughs> what about tonight? Uh, tonight? Our dinner date. You haven't forgotten that. And the weekend party at the wedding Oh, place? no, no, no. I haven't forgotten. And I do want to go, Barbara, and be with you, but... Uh... But you're not sure you can make either of them. Oh, that's right, darling. I, I hope you understand. I do. But I don't have to like it. Will you call me soon? Very soon, Barbara. You know I will. All right. Climb back in your treadmill. Sorry I interrupted. Goodbye, Barbara. Bye. <sighs> morning, Paul. Oh, good morning, Dick. Hey, you look and sound a little down, old man. When are you going to take that vacation? Oh, that's your idea. Well, it's your health. And here's something that says we can spare you around here for a while. Oh? The latest audit. You've got the company in good shape, mister. Here, take a look at this report. Now, with the deals we have set, we'll be counting profits for six months at least. Can't miss. <laughs> I hope you're right. Really, Paul, you've done wonders. And all of it in exactly two years. Two years? Almost to the dot. It's July 7th. <laughs> you know, I thought it was still June. Hey, look, Paul, there's such a thing as concentrating too hard on one thing. I still think that a vacation... Uh, yes, yes, I'm definitely going to take some time off, Dick, and, and right away. You... Say, are you feeling all right? Well, of course. Why, what's the matter? I'm asking you. First, it's no vacation, positively. Now you've practically got your bags packed. Well, can't a guy change his mind? I suppose, but... Paul, is, uh, is there anything wrong? Anything I could help you with? Why, no, no, there's not a thing wrong, Dick. Not a thing in the world. But everything's wrong, isn't it, Paul? It's a shock to realize that your time is up. And you haven't long to live if Bran keeps his bargain with you. There just isn't anything you can do. Not now, anyway. You decide to keep your date with Barbara. And later that evening at the Weddington party, you wander out on the terrace and stand there looking out over the spacious grounds. Mm, beautiful out here, isn't it, Paul? Yes. Paul. Yep. What's wrong with us? Wrong? I didn't know that there was I'm anything... I'm young, healthy, and at least fairly attractive. I'm also very much in love with you. Barbara, I... And I think you're in love with me. Of course I am, Barbara. So, there it is. 
Isn't it customary for two people in love to do something about it? Yes, but... Well, there are things, I mean, problems I have to work out problems? before I can... Oh, darling, don't you want to tell me about them? Perhaps I could help you. I can't very well. Not right now, darling. Oh, I see. There's nothing you could do, really. Oh, darling, I, I've just got to work this thing out by myself. If you'll just give me a little time to straighten things out. Uh, is it about the business, Paul? Well, uh, yes, yes, in a way. But I thought everything was going so well. Dick's been telling us what a grand job you've done with the company. Well, he even mentioned that you're going to take a vacation. Well, I haven't quite made up my mind about oh, it. Oh, why don't you, Paul? It would do you good to get away. Get away? Yes. Yes, it would do me good to get away. Look, look, I I'm going down to Father's summer home at Carmel tomorrow. Why don't you join us? Hmm? I know Father would love to meet you. Carmel? Mm, wonderful place, really. Quiet, restful, a perfect hideaway. Oh, you'd love it, Paul. Yes, I... Uh, let me think about it, darling. I'll let you know. You won't have to. I'll be there waiting for you whenever you decide to come down. All right. And, Paul. Yes? Darling, you really have been working too hard. You're not looking well at all. Getting away from everything would be the best thing in the world for you. <laughs> Barbara has given you an idea, hasn't she, Paul? Yes, you do need to get away. As far away from Lee Brand as possible. But Carmel isn't far enough, is it? Shanghai, Buenos Aires, perhaps. Yes, that's much better. And it's the only thing you can do. The next morning, you hurriedly pack a suitcase. And as you're about to phone for a taxi... Oh, yes? Miss Aurelia? That's right. Bill Adams. I'm with the Atlantic Life Insurance Company. Just making a routine check on your policy. My my policy? Uh-huh. Why, is something wrong? No, nothing wrong. As I said, it's just a routine check. About the change of beneficiary you made a couple of years ago when you named Mr. Brand beneficiary of the full amount of $250,000. Well, what about it? At the time, you stated your reason for the change was that you're indebted to Mr. Brand in a business way. Well, yes, that's correct. Well... We understand your business is in excellent shape now. Thought perhaps you'd want to change the beneficiary again. Some member of the family, maybe. Oh. Uh, come in, won't you, please? Of course. Mr. Adams gives you an idea, doesn't he, Paul? If you leave town and Bran learns he's no longer the beneficiary, that your death will mean nothing to him, you'll be a lot safer wherever you are. Things look brighter now, don't they, Paul? And you're almost hospitable as the insurance man enters your apartment. Uh, sit down, sit down, please. Thanks. Uh, you know, it's uh, funny you should drop in, Mr. Adams. I've uh, been thinking about my insurance policy. Oh? It uh, would be perfectly all right if I changed beneficiary again, wouldn't it? Well, it's up to you. Well, uh, could you do it right away? Well, yes, I suppose so. Have to check with my boss. Uh, your boss? Yeah. You see... He happens to be the beneficiary at the moment. What? You mean... Yeah. Lee Brand. You realize now how useless it would be to try to change the insurance policy, don't you, Paul? And you realize, too, that running away is now out of the question. From now on, Brand will have you watched every minute. You're trapped. There seems to be no escape from Brand... And your date with death. But you're not going to give up, not just yet. There's Barbara. Somehow you feel she'll be able to help you. She's in love with you. She'll do anything for you, won't she, Paul? It's early afternoon when you arrive at Carmel. Drive down the main street and park your car before a small curio shop. Quickly, as you hurry inside to ask directions to the Belmont estate, two men are standing near the door as you enter. And as the door closes behind you, one of them turns around. And you freeze in your tracks. Brand! I beg your pardon? Brand, what are you doing here? I'm sorry, young man. There must be some mistake. I'm afraid I don't know you. You, you don't know me? 
Say, wait a minute, I don't understand. Uh, you'll excuse me, I'm quite busy. Mr. Tompkins, hold on to these bookends for me, will you? I'll pick them up in a day or so. Uh, yes, sir, I'll do that. Will there be No, any... thank you. Friend, wait, wait, I want to talk to you. Was there something you wanted, young fellow? Yes, that, uh, that man, who, who is he? Why, that's Mr. Belmont. Uh, Belmont? Julius Belmont lives out there at the beach. He and his daughter just drove up from the city today. It's fantastic, isn't it, Paul? Grand the gambler is Barbara's father. And even as the realization hits you, you see a way out of your bargain. Yes, Barbara is the answer. Sweet, trusting Barbara. And she's waiting for you to marry her. Marriage. That would solve everything, wouldn't it? Yes, you can use Barbara to save your life. You hurry back out into the street, find a phone booth, and call the Belmont Estate. Oh, Paul, this is a surprise. Oh, I hadn't expected to hear from you so soon. When are you coming? Well, I'm not Barbara. Oh. Oh, I see. Barbara, darling, how soon can you meet me at my apartment? At, at your apartment? Paul, what's happened? For nothing, nothing at all, darling. You remember what we talked about last night, that problem I had to work out? Yes. Well, everything, everything is settled now, darling. My problem has been solved. Oh, then you, you mean... I mean, I'm asking you to marry me, Barbara, right away. Oh, then you aren't going to make me wait till I'm old and gray. What do you say, Barbara? Oh, of course I'll marry you. Could have told you that the first day we met. How soon? How soon can you pack a bag and meet me? Well, why can't you come here to Carmel? I want you to meet Father. I, I haven't told him about you yet. Oh, no, no, please, don't, don't. Don't say anything to anyone. Just meet me. Paul, there is something the matter. Won't you tell me? Nothing, that... nothing's the matter, darling. But then why can't you come here and... Darling, darling, will you do as I ask this one time? All right. We, we have a few guests here. It, it may be some time before I can get away. But I'll come as quickly as I can. Oh, good. And hurry. Hurry, will you, sweetheart? Yes, your problems are over now, aren't they, Paul? And you wonder what brand alias Mr. Julius Belmont will say when he discovers that you've married his daughter. It'll be too late then for him to do anything and you'll be freed. You hurry back to town to your apartment and wait for Barbara. And then shortly before seven that night. Oh, Barbara, I thought you'd ne... Hello, Elliot. Brian. Mind if I come in? What? What do you want? It was a bad mistake you made, Elliot, prying into my private affairs. Look, look, Brian, I didn't... I a... don't know how you found out or what. But you shouldn't have come down to Carmel, Elliot. You shouldn't have found out I was Julius Belmont. Oh, wait a minute, I... Uh... What are you doing? Recognize this piece of paper? It's your suicide note, Elliot. Bran, Bran, listen to me. I still have another day. Give me a break. I can't take any more chances. Well, then give me a chance to explain. It's Sorry, about... kid, but I'm through gambling. It's all over. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, since this is the season when so many of the most popular radio shows go off the air for the summer, I have tonight good news for you Whistler fans. The Signal Oil program, The Whistler, will continue to come to you throughout the summer without interruption. This makes the fifth consecutive year that Signal Oil Company has broadcast The Whistler for 52 weeks each year. What's more, if your vacation travel should take you into other Pacific Coast states, you can still enjoy your favorite mystery because Signal Oil Company broadcasts The Whistler on 16 CBS stations throughout five Pacific Coast states. For the nearest Columbia station, wherever you happen to be, just consult the handy radio log in the new Signal Road Maps, which are yours for the asking at all Signal stations. So this summer... When you want the tops in radio entertainment, we hope you'll continue to tune in The Whistler. And when you want the tops in gasoline quality, we hope you'll turn in to a signal service station and fill up with signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Now, back to The Whistler.
Yes, Lee Brand was a happy man, and there was a spring to his step as he crossed the front terrace of his palatial summer home at Carmel. There was a smile on his face, the smile of a man who had just accomplished something worthwhile. It was over, the plan that had begun two years ago. Paul Elliott was lying dead in his apartment with that suicide note beside him. It would only be a formality now. Of course, there'd be an investigation, but with the note to back Brand up, it was only a matter of a few weeks until he received the insurance money. Enough so that he could leave the old life, forget himself as Brand, really begin to live as the man his daughter thought him to be. Julius Belmont, wealthy, retired businessman. In the study, Brand poured himself a drink, sat back and relaxed near the huge French windows overlooking the ground. Hello? I've told you never to call me here, Dave. This is important, Lee. Got a tip. Somebody told the cops they saw you leave Paul Elliott's apartment. They'll be around to talk to you. That's all right. I'm ready for them. But when they find out you're the beneficiary of his life insurance, a quarter of a million bucks... You're forgetting that this was suicide, Dave. Yeah, I know, but... Well, I just wanted to let you know, that's all. Thanks. There's nothing to worry about, Dave. Nothing at all. That suicide note was written in the deceased's own handwriting. Lee Brand was sure he had nothing to worry about. All he had to do was wait, let the investigation take a natural course. But as he dropped the phone back onto the hook... He's dead. Oh, dead. Barbara, what's the matter? You... He's dead. He's dead. What? Who's dead? Barbara, what are you talking about? Paul. Paul Elliott. Oh, Dad, we were going to be married. He was in some sort of trouble. Paul Elliott? You were going to marry Paul Elliott? Yes. Baby, oh. why did you tell me? I didn't even realize that you knew. Oh, he loved me, and I loved him. Dad, you got to do something about this. Find out who killed him. He, he was murdered? He never would have killed himself. I know. He just called me. We were going to be married right away. I know they wanted to make it look like suicide, well, I, but... I don't understand. Whoever killed him left a note. A suicide note. The police might have believed it, but I didn't. And now they'll find the murderer. Barbara, what... What did you do? I burned it before the police got there. I burned the suicide note. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at the same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Wally Mayer, Herb Butterfield, and Doris Singleton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Phil McMurray and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, at the same time next Wednesday, another strange tale by The Whistler. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>